you, Lori, for saving me on that one. Praise God. Vestal Goodman in the house. <clears throat> Amen. Page 120. I know I can do this one because I've done it many times. This happened to be my dad's favorite song. And uh, I remember at my dad's funeral, I got up and greeted people, and I said, we're going to have church because dad ain't here. He's having church in glory. But I said, dad's done got the victory. I heard my dad preach a sermon on this song. I heard him sing this song. And he lived this song. And I'm glad tonight that there is still victory in Jesus. It's been there from day one since Jesus died on Calvary and rose again. And there's still victory in his name. No matter what you go through, no matter how bleak it looks, no matter how bad it looks, no matter what's going on, whether the doctor gives you bad news, whether whatever, he still gives the victory. Amen. Here we go. Well, I heard an old, old story How my Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary To save a wretch like me And I heard about His groaning Of His precious blood so toning Well, then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Come on. Oh, there's a victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming. Oh, he loved me ere I knew him and all my love was due him. He plunged me to victory the cleansing blood well I heard about his healing of his precious power healing how he made the lame to walk again and he caused the blind to see oh and then I cried dear Jesus come and heal my broken spirit and somehow Jesus came and to me the big come on now and we sing victory in Jesus my Savior forever cause he sought me and he bought me with his re oh it sounds awful good he loved me ere I knew him and all my love we do him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Now I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. Come on. And I heard about all oh, the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. Oh, about the angels singing and the old Oh, and I like this part because it says, and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of oh hallelujah cause there is victory in Jesus my Savior forever he sought me and he bought me with his re oh he loved me ere I knew him Oh, let's do that third verse again. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about all those streets of gold that were beyond the crystal. Oh, about the angels singing and the old redemption story. Oh, and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song. Oh, lift it up to you tonight. We sing victory in Jesus, my Savior, forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. Oh, he loved me ere I knew him and all my love. 
If you don't notice, Brother Ed, would you hand me that water right there? Because I'm about ready to die. If you don't notice, these songs all have a theme. Just about every song in this book has a theme. And most of them are about heaven at one point or another. It's about heaven. That's where we're planning on going. That's that destination we're looking for. I like this song because it says, when we all get to heaven, what a day that's going to be. I can look out here and I know most of you. I know you got loved ones on the other side. My daddy's there. My wife's there. Or what used to call them. Her daddy's there. Brother Willem's over there. They may have been plagued with things in life. But now on the streets of gold, I can picture them all just having a good old time. One of these days, those pearly gates are going to open, and I hope it's the rapture. Because we're going to walk in, and we're all going to get to heaven. And we're going to have a shouting time. Because we're going to be with the Father. We're going to be with the Son, and we're going to be with the Holy Ghost. And we're going to be perfect. That ought to be enough right there to make you shout. And if you can't sing on key, he'll make you sing on key. And even if you don't know the words, you'll still be able to sing the song. Because it's a song the angels can't sing. Amen. Hallelujah. We'll sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to what a day of rejoicing that will be. Oh, when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout. Oh, come on now, I said, when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. Spent time on their knees, and God had given them a song in their hearts, 
And I remember as a little boy, we'd sing this song. And we, you know how we do when we feel those old Holy Ghost bumps on us? I remember people like Sister Ellington at Newport. You'd sing this song and all of a sudden she'd have a Holy Ghost spell. You know, she's one of them old mamas with the little bun on her head. And you talk about heaven and they'd get happy. We had one at Bank Lake Street named Sister Meeks. She'd jump out in the aisle and she'd just go a little bit crazy. Now what I want you to do is we sing this fourth verse again and do the chorus. I want you to worship. You know what? It doesn't matter if it's a beat of Southern Gospel or if it's a beat of a hymn or if it's a beat of even Skillet which I don't like, but that's okay. And I won't even try to sing those songs. But you know what? It doesn't matter. It can be hip-hop. It can be rap. It's all about who we're serving tonight. It's all about King Jesus. And one of these days, it ain't going to matter what type of band's playing, and it ain't going to matter what type of music's playing, but when we all get to heaven, it's going to be a song. It's going to be worship. It's going to be praise. And we're going to cry holy, holy, holy to the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Help me sing this. Verse 4. Well, onward to the prize before us. Soon his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open. We shall tread streets of gold. Lift it up when we all get to him. Oh, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. Well, let's do it just one more time. Lift your hands tonight when we all get to Him. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. Give God the biggest hand clap of praise you can tonight. Hallelujah. You guys did awesome tonight. Wonderful job. Amen. If they say old people can't do anything, they're wrong. Amen. Robert? Actually, I'm going to switch things up on you guys just a little bit. the fast one on them. We practiced one song earlier, but going with kind of the theme of going home tonight, I got to change songs just a little bit. So if you know this song, please join me, sing right along, get happy with it because uh, the truth is we ain't going to be here too much longer. Y'all believe that, right? Yeah, you do? Because it didn't sound like you did there for a second. I got a little worried about you. All right? Y'all worship with me That's the sing this. It's been a while, so I'm a little rusty. We'll hide upon that mountain called Transfiguration. Of 
gonna split that eastern sky Cause I believe he's a coming back Like he said Let me talk to you for just a second There's gonna be a time coming really, really soon Where we're gonna hear God say those words Son, go get my children But right before he does that He's gonna call on this, this angel That we all know by Gabriel And much like JT's over there playing that saxophone we're going to hear an awesome sound come ringing out from a mountaintop. And it's going to be the sound of trumpets and angels singing and saying, Hey, it's time to go home. Amen. Well, I can see that time is near when we'll soon see that appearing. You know that this could be the hour. Oh, church, this could be that day When those saints from every nation We're gonna lose our gravitation And in the midst of the air We'll be caught away Cause I believe he's coming back Just like he said in the twinkling of an eye he's gonna split that eastern sky Take up the offering. Oh, sorry. Gene, get ready. Paula, come take the offering. <laughs> After singing like that, my voice gets very deep. <clears throat> it's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. I'm very grateful to be here. Um, and if it's okay, um, I've got a couple of prayer requests. Um, the Lord has really blessed me. Um, some of you know, some of you don't know, I work for state government um, and <clears throat> working in state government you can't just go out and announce that you're a Christian um, but how many of you know you don't have to that the Lord should be shining through you well fortunately I got to work with a wonderful Christian woman um, for quite a little while and and she retired last year um, but she called me and asked that I put her daughter on a prayer list this week um, she's having surgery on the 21st um, uh, in, in, uh, it, it appears as though um, they found some cancer, um, but they are saying at this point in time they're going to be able to remove and she'll not have to have any kind of chemo or radiation. So we're praising God for that. But please keep her in your, your thoughts um, in your prayers this week. Her name is Alice. Um, and my second prayer request is for my niece. I don't know how many of you know my sister-in-law, um, Melissa Phelps and my two nieces. Um, they both have genetic disorders and quite frankly to boil it down to the, the minimum, um, they have um, juvenile Parkinson's. So many of you know what that means for adults, older people who have Parkinson's. Well these are, these are children. My niece um, Olivia is four and my niece Madison is, is getting ready to turn two on the 4th of December. Well, they've recently learned that um, they had some genetic testing done, and there are, they were very blessed again. God moved, and they got the best genetic testing that you can get anywhere. Um, so advanced, they don't know what they're looking at. They don't, they know, they've got numbers. They know that there's mutations. They don't know what it means. Well, they've just found out that my niece, um, Madison, um, it appears that what they believe right now is that she has a severe immunity 
problem. Um, the uh, the uh, immunizations um, that she's had so far, um, when they do blood work, you should be up in the positive, close to 98. She's negative. Um, and this would mean if she does end up having this immunity problem, she'll have to have tra blood transfusions and receive all of her immunizations two more times. Um, but I know a God who is a healer, and he has been involved in this every step of the way. Um, but I ask that you just remember Madison. She'll be... Um, probably undergoing surgery again to remove adenoids and um, to take a scope down into her lung um, that either has been collapsed since she's been born, lower part of her lung, or it just never developed or something's going on there. They're not sure. Just keep her in your prayers. Now, um, I've got two scriptures that I want to read. Um, and the funny thing is I was asked to do this months and months and months ago. Um, and the scripture at that time came to my mind then, um, but it kind of goes along with the way service has been going. I'm going to start with Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And then moving on to 2 Corinthians here. <clears throat> um, chapter 8, um, the title um, above the scripture in, in my Bible says, Excel in giving. Moreover, brother, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, that in great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abound in the riches of their liberty. For I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing, imploring us with much urgency that we would receive the gift and the fellowship of ministry to the saints. And not only as we had hoped, but they first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. So we urged Titus that he had begun so he would complete this grace in you as well. But as you abound in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all diligence, and, and in your love for us, see that you abound in this grace also. Then the next title says, Christ, our pattern. I speak not by commandment, but I am testing the sincerity of your love by the diligence of others. For you know that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that you through his poverty might, might become rich. And then this I gave advice. It is to your advantage not only to be doing what you began and were desiring to do a year ago, but now you also must complete the doing of it. And there that as there was a readiness to desire it. So there also may be completion out of what you have. For if there is first and willing mind is accepted according to what one has and not according to what one does not have. For I do not mean that others should be eased and you burden, but by an equality that now at this time your abundance may supply their lack and that their abundance also may supply your lack and that there may be equality. As it is written, he who gathered much had nothing left over, and he who gathered little had no lack. Now it's time to take up the offering. <laughs> You know, I can add to what you was talking about, the little girls. 
you know, you'd think their mother would be so overwhelmed that she would just be in the home taking care of them kids. That's not so. She's been ministering to our daughter-in-law for over a year. And her little boys is the two little boys that has the prayer ministry on the school bus with my granddaughter. Praise the Lord. I am so thankful for her. She's such a blessing. Go ahead. Living in a cold, dark world, evolutions taught by man. They took prayer out of school, and violence filled our land. Can you identify? They ordered the Ten Commandments removed from our sight. There's one question I'd like to ask you. What's wrong with living right? What's wrong with living right? Can anybody tell me? I'm doing what I know to do. I'm serving Jesus. He's the truth and the light. I'm not going where I shouldn't go. I'm serving Jesus with all my might. Can anybody tell me what's wrong with living right? Now you may I'm strange, out of step, or how to rule. Different from this world, and I don't know what to do. Call me crazy or insane, but tell me I'm not right. But you know there's one question I'd like to ask you What's wrong with living right? What's wrong with living right? Can anybody tell me I'm doing what I know to do I'm serving Jesus He's the way and the truth. I'm not going where I shouldn't go. I'm serving Jesus with all my might. Can anybody tell me what's wrong with living right? wrong with living right. 
pastor say find their way at the sound of your great name all condemned feel no shame at the sound of your great name every fear has no place at the sound of your great name the enemy he has to flee at the sound of your great name jesus worthy is the man that was slain for us Son of God and man, you are high and lifted up, and all the world will praise your great name. All the weak find their strength at the sound of your great name. Hungry souls receive grace at the sound of your great name. Fatherless, they find their rest at the sound of your great name. Sick are healed and the dead is raised at the sound of your great name. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain for us. Son of God and man, you are high and lifted up. And all the world will praise your great name. Jesus, worthy is the Lamb that was slain for us. Son of God and man, you are high and lifted up, and all the world will praise your great name, your great name. authority in the name of Jesus over our enemy and we can tell him get on out of here you know he's under our feet and that's where he needs to stay sometimes he tries to rear his ugly head we need to stop him instead of entertaining him we need to tell him like this well listen to me devil tell you what I'm gonna do you walked on me Told me not to try, but I'm 
revelations. I see where you are through, and I am tired of you, Satan. You kept me bound too long, but too long. I'm going to raise my hand toward heaven. I'm going to sing you a happy song, happy song. Well, listen to me, devil. Tell you what I'm going to do. You won't tell me about long enough now. Praise the Lord. I think we've had about an hour of praise and worship pretty much. Actually, 54 minutes. Amen. I clocked it. Six minutes thereabouts. Um, I was thinking, though, there are, and I'm not complaining or criticizing, but there are many a churches today that are cutting off services and limiting services. Less and less time to worship the Lord. I'm thinking that as we see the day approaching, we probably need a little bit more time. Amen. Amen. I really do. And I think, you know, I don't know about you all, but I like church. I like being in God's presence. I like being around, you know, God's people. I like feeling the spirit of God. Amen. And I just enjoy myself here. Amen. Amen. I'm going to try to get two more points in from where I started this morning, if that's okay with you. So if you have, please, your Bibles, go to John chapter 15, verse 26 again. And I want to say it is gorgeous seeing all this new family over here and Brother Barnett's here tonight. Give him a hand clap, amen, all of our visitors. I'm, in, I'm happy with that. Is it Sasha? Is that, did I say that right? I think so. It's good to have just a whole bunch of new people here. Amen. Loving it. Looking forward to baptizing a couple of folks after church. The water is really warm, so it won't be a shock. If you want, we can throw ice cubes in if you want to 
treat it like a lake, we could do that. But John chapter 15, verse 26, again, I'm going to read it from the NLT and then from the King James. The NLT says, but I will send you the advocate, the spirit of truth. He will come to you from the Father and will testify all about me. The KJV reads it like this, but when the comforter is come, who I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. I'm going to ask you all to pray together and open up this part of the service in preaching. I want to hear you lead us in prayer, so go. Amen. You may give the Lord a hand clap and be seated if you wish. This morning we started off by preaching about the Holy Ghost, the third person of the Trinity. And you heard me say more than once, the Holy Ghost of God is not an it. Amen. It's not a thing. It's not something that we play around with from time to time. It is a part of the Trinity, and it does have personality. Somebody say amen. It does have characteristics, which is what we're going to be going through some more of those tonight. This morning, we spoke about the characteristic of knowledge that the Spirit of God has. Uh, reading in 1 Corinthians 2, verses 10 and 11, the Bible says, But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, Yea, the deep things of God, for what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Amen. We talked a little bit this morning about how the spirit's knowledge knows you. Amen. He knows you. He knows your thoughts. He knows everything about you, this information, you know. The Father knows it. He knows it. Amen. The, we learned this morning that the Spirit of God is a gentleman. Somebody say amen. Yeah. He knows ahead of time what you will and what you will not do. Somebody say amen. I think sometimes we think when we come into the house of God, we wonder if the Spirit knows what we want. Spirit knows what you want, and he knows what you're willing to do to get it. Somebody say amen. And unfortunately, the Spirit knows when we're unwilling to do anything to get it. Somebody say amen. So if the Spirit knows that we're unwilling to get what we came for from God, he will not force himself upon you. Somebody say amen. And I want to say, aren't you glad that the Spirit of God is not a forceful individual? The Spirit of God will take control of a man or woman if he knows that the vessel is willing. Amen? Because a willing vessel of God can be used to do great things. Somebody say amen. Now, getting into the second thing I wanted to talk about tonight, I hope to get two more things in. I want to talk to you about the will of the Holy Ghost of God. He has a knowledge. He has a great understanding of you and a great understanding of things and a great understanding of the world. But he also has a will. He also has a desire for you. 1 Corinthians 12 and 11 says this, But all these worketh the one and the same Spirit, dividing to each one severally as he, who is he? The Spirit of God, as the Spirit of God wills. Have you ever met somebody that was strong-willed? Has anybody ever had a child that is strong-willed? Anybody ever had a young child that is strong-willed? Amen. A strong-willed child will do whatever that strong-willed child has to do to get its way. Did everybody hear me? I remember our babies when they were growing up. Every baby goes through this phase, I want my way, and I'll do whatever I have to do to get my way. Sometimes my babies would 
throw themselves in the floor and have a temper tantrum, thinking that the temper tantrum would get them their way. Unfortunately for them, daddy would throw himself in the floor with them and have a temper tantrum alongside them. Amen. And do you know what that does to a strong-willed child who's trying to get their way? They look over at the adult thinking, you look foolish, amen, and they stop doing what they're doing, amen, because they're realizing that I'm not going to get my way. I've heard about children who run around, and if they don't get their way, they will hold their breath, amen, amen. Here's what I've been taught about a strong-willed child that holds their breath. Let them hold their breath long enough, and they will pass out, and they will start breathing again. Somebody say amen. So you see, the best way to overcome a strong-willed child is to have a stronger will than them. Somebody say amen. And I've also been taught by my abusive parents, amen, that a strong-willed child, you can have that strong will beat out of them, amen. Has anybody ever had that will beaten out of you before? Amen. So the Spirit of God also has a will. I see all these people pointing fingers at my mom and dad right now. Amen. That's good. Payback time. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Spirit of God has a will. Now, if you heard me say this this morning, the Spirit of God is not a mere influence or power power which we use according to our own wills it's not as i said this morning it's not just something we use when we want to use it it's not just something that we pull out of the corner when we need it somebody say amen but the spirit of god himself he has a will amen and let me say this very boldly to you tonight the spirit of god will not do what he does not want to do So what happens, saints of God, if the Spirit of God is unwilling to do things he doesn't want to do, oftentimes Spirit-filled people will take it up on themselves to do what they think is the will of God. Can I say this? If it is of man, it will come to naught. Somebody say amen. But if it is of God, if it is of the Spirit of God, it will come to pass. Somebody say amen. And let me say something. I've had many people say to me, Pastor, how do you know the difference in people who speak in tongues and who prophesy and do all these things? Let me tell everybody this tonight. Don't sit back and worry and be concerned about those people. Why? According to the Scriptures, if it is of man, it will come to naught. But if it is of the Spirit of God, you will know it because it will come to pass. Let me tell you this. The Bible's very clear on people. I often ask this question, how do you know an apple tree? It has apples. Amen. How do you know an orange tree? It has oranges on it. Amen. You can tell a tree by the fruit that it bears. Amen. Amen. So if you've got somebody running around saying they're a Christian and they're not acting like a Christian, mark them. If you've got somebody running around acting like they're filled with the Spirit of God and they're not doing the things that line up to the Scriptures, mark them. Why do you say that, Pastor? Because if there are people running around saying that they are the Spirit of God or that they're filled with the Spirit of God and they're not doing things that line up with the Word of God, something should be checking in your brain at that point. The will of the Spirit of God is not to lie to you. It's not to hurt you. It's not to tear down. It's not to degrade. It's not to talk about people, but it is to strengthen you. Where did I learn that from? That is from Jesus Christ himself. He said, I must go away so that my Father will send you a comforter. If you look up the definition of comforter, the NLT calls it an advocate. I did a little bit of studying on that word, and what I understand is is when Jesus walked the face of the earth, the disciples learned a lot from Jesus, and they relied a lot on Jesus. Somebody say amen. So when Jesus was walking around, they would say, Jesus, teach us how to pray. 
Jesus would teach them how to pray. They would go to Jesus and say, Jesus, why were we not able to cast out this demon? Jesus would fuss at them a little bit, and he would teach them. When Peter was walking on the water, and he began to sink, and he started going underwater, what did he do? He reached up to Jesus, so Jesus would grab a hold of him and bring him back up to the top of the water. Somebody say amen. But when Jesus was gone, everybody catching this? When Jesus was gone, who did they have? Again, Jesus said this, I have to go away because my father is going to send you another advocate, another helper, another comforter. He's going to send you the power that you need. You see, here's where we get in trouble. If we treat the Holy Spirit of God as just some simple little thing that we use when we need extra power, then we're not using it the way we're supposed to be using it. Pentecostal people, Holy Ghost Spirit-filled people, listen to this for a moment. You and I are supposed to rely on the Spirit of God the same way the disciples relied upon Jesus Christ. Can I say that again? We are supposed to rely upon the Spirit of God the same way the disciples relied upon Jesus Christ. When you and I get in trouble, somebody say amen, we call upon the name of Jesus using the Spirit of God knowing that Jesus will intervene on our behalf. Listen to this. We know that he will intervene on our behalf. Why? Because it's his will. Pastor, are you saying it's the Spirit of God's will to intervene on our behalf? Yes. If you are a true child of God, it is his will to intervene on your behalf. You heard me say it this morning. There'll be times I'll be seeking God's presence or seeking something from God. And Marcus, I won't know what to say. And the Bible, Robert says, is that the Spirit of God will intervene on our behalf. Why? It's his will that you and I reach the throne room of God. Somebody say amen. When our vocabulary is limited, his vocabulary is not limited. Do you understand that? When you and I are down and out and powerless and weak, like Paul said numerous times, the Spirit of God never gets weak. The Spirit of God never runs out of power. Why? Because he is an endless supply of it. The Spirit of God's will is for you and I to have an endless supply of power. Pastor, what does that mean? That means this, saints of God. You're laying in your hospital bed and you have no strength left. You hear what I'm saying? You don't have the power to do this. You don't have the power to say a word or speak a word. The Spirit of God, He helps you raise your hands. Somebody say, and can I tell you this, saints of God, a true child of God, if they have no ability to lift their hand, the Spirit of God knows what they're doing in their brain. Somebody say amen. How many of you know that it is the Spirit of God's will for you and I to praise God, saints of God, even if we can't raise a hand? We give God a hand clap, please. Romans 8 and 27 says this, And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. I kind of sped through the will part because I wanted to get to this one. Amen. I'm going to read it again, 8 and 27. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. According to whose will? It's the Spirit of God's will to follow the will of God. Did I read that right? I'm going to read it again or say it again. It's the spirit of God's will to follow the will of God. Let me read this to you. 
The word here translated mind is a comprehensive word. Art, I really like this one. A comprehensive word including the ideas of thought, feeling, and purpose. I'm going to let that sink in for a minute because I got happy when I read that. Mind being translated means thought, feeling, and purpose. It is the same word used in Romans 8 and 7 where we read the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. That's a perplexing verse, isn't it? The carnal mind. How many carnal-minded people do we have here tonight? Only a couple of you had boldness enough to raise your hand. This says the carnal mind is enmity with God. Romans 8 and 27 says, And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints. Mm. Can I play with that for a minute? Carnal-minded people. A lot of carnal-minded people out there, right? What's a carnal mind, Pastor? A carnal mind is a fleshly mind. A fleshly mind is something that reacts the way the flesh would react. Right? You've heard us say this many times, somebody cuts you off. How many of you say, God bless you, have a nice day? How many of you do this? Amen. How many of you say and do things that you probably shouldn't do? Amen. That's still carnal mind. Amen. That's still a mind, saints of God, that is sometimes controlled by the flesh. The flesh sometimes dictates what we act on, what we say, what we do. Amen. But the Spirit of God, His will is that our mind be changed. Do you remember Romans 12, too? We quoted around here a lot. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Well, Lord, when I thought about that, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, if I redefine that, that means be be transformed by your thought, feeling, and purpose. Mm. Who's going to sleep on me? Is it too warm? Be transformed by the renewing of your thought, your feeling, and purpose. Now, hang on for a minute. Let me say this before I get into this. It is the Spirit of God's will that everyone be filled with the Spirit of God. Does anybody want to know why? Because if you and I really truly want to be successful in this life through Jesus Christ, our mind has to change. Our thoughts, personalities, wills, you name it, it all has to change. Why? Because when those things don't change, those things get in our way. Somebody help me tonight. I'm feeling good up here. Let me jump on this. Change our thoughts. How many of y'all want your thoughts changed? I do. I most certainly do. Misty said something the other day, and she's probably going to smile when I say this. But somebody had mentioned to her that it's okay when you're in a lot of pain to cuss. Hold on. It's okay to cuss. Why? Because God's a forgiving God. And God will forgive you. Hmm. God is a forgiving God. Agreed. He will forgive you. But, hmm. When you willfully commit a sin thinking that he's going to forgive you anyway, I think you probably got two sins there that you need to be repenting of, not just the one. Somebody say amen. But here's the thing. If your mind is changed hang on a minute saints of God if your mind is changed those words are not in there did I say that right if your mind is changed those words are not in there can I tell you what this crazy guy does when he's in a lot of pain I pray somebody say amen 
I remember when I was sitting in the ER and I was in pain and I was wanting the pain meds. I wasn't getting mad at the people. I wasn't cussing at the people. I was getting a little frustrated that the pain wasn't going away, but I was calling upon the name of Jesus. Why? Because even if they couldn't get the IV in the vein, my God could still supply a dose of something that takes away my pain. Amen. When I'm laying in the bed not feeling well, saints of God, it's not cuss words going through my mind. For some reason, it's praises to God when I'm laying there in pain. Somebody tell me what's happened. The Spirit of God is getting inside of this man's brain and changing it. Am I perfect? Absolutely not. Do I have moments? Yes. Yes. But it's the, it's the will of the Spirit of God that he intervene on my behalf. Vicki, when something bad comes out of my mouth, it's the Spirit of God that convicts my heart and says, Wayne, that's not the right thing to be doing right now. Wayne, those words that are coming to your mind, those are not the right things to be saying right now. Why? You see, the Spirit of God will change my thoughts. Instead of figuring out a way to be mad at God for a situation, I figure out a way to praise God for a situation. The Bible says this. Let me word this properly. If you're spirit-filled, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. Pastor, does the Bible say that? If you read that chapter properly, you will find out that if you are sold out to the Spirit of God, everything that happens to you is for your good. Pastor, is that right? If it is the Spirit of God's will to do great things in us, at some point we should get to the place to where our will says, Spirit of God, you use me the way you want to use me. Spirit of God, if it's God's will for me to go through a trial, I'll go through the trial. Somebody say amen. But my thoughts are such that if I'm going through the trial, the Spirit of God will take care of me while I'm going through the trial. Who believes that tonight? The Spirit of God will change our feelings. The mind of the Holy Ghost wants to change my feelings. When I'm feeling sad, I have something to comfort me. Who believes that tonight? When I'm feeling sad, I have something to comfort me. When I feel angry. How many angry people we got? Some of you are honest. Praise the Lord. I think Shelly and her family are going to be in the altar tonight because they're the only ones raising their hands with everything. Amen. Angry people, sad people, evil-minded people, I think they raise their hands for. I just threw that in. It worked. Amen. When I feel angry, the Spirit of God talks to me. When I feel angry, the Spirit of God, as I said before, convicts me. When I feel lonely. Anybody ever felt lonely before? When I feel lonely, the Spirit of God begins to speak to me. And when the Spirit of God begins to speak to you, saints of God, it lets you know that you're not alone anymore. Somebody say amen. The Spirit of God changes our purpose. Do you know what the original purpose was for you and I when God created us? Bible scholars, speak to me. Come on, it's not some trick. Okay. Okay, part of his family. To worship him, to praise him. We were made... To reflect the image of God. We were made for his good purpose. We were made to be a pleasure unto him. Can I talk to you here for a minute? Satan, when he came to this earth, he changed our purpose. Mm -hmm. 
If it was God's will for you and I to love him, to worship him, to serve others, all those things you said, if it was his will for us to do those things, Satan changed it to his purpose being us dealing or dwelling on ourselves. He took it from being a pleasure to God to being somebody that worships God to being somebody that satisfies themselves. And can I say this, saints of God? We have a world today of people who are worried about themselves more than anything else. Satan intervened and he took women and turned them into something that they should not even be thought about doing. Somebody say amen. He's taken our children, something that are pleasures to their parents or should be pleasures to their parents, turning them into things that are just hard to deal with. He took men. Men who, according to scriptures, are supposed to be the supplier, supposed to be the head of their household, and turned them into things that are off wondering about doing things that they want to do and nothing else. And as a result of that, what happens? You see a declining home. Somebody say amen. You see children running around doing all the things they want to do. You see our baby girls being kidnapped and stolen and taken off and being used for things that they were not meant to be used for. Amen. You see husbands out there chasing after things that they should not be changing after. What happened? Satan changed the purpose that God intended for you and I. I could get into some stuff that get me in trouble tonight. Mm. Help me, Lord. Amen. JT, it's God's will for men to be men. It's God's will for women to be women. It's God's will for children to be children. Amen. It's God's will for parents to be parents. Somebody say amen. It's God's will for men to work. Somebody say amen. It's God's will for women to be the nurturers of their children. Somebody say amen. And somebody tell me what has happened, saints of God. The enemy changed all that. Pastor, that's old school preaching. Call it what you will. Call it what you will. Lori and I, over the years, we have counseled a many a couple. Please understand this. And oftentimes, when the question is presented, what do you guys do in tough situations? I'll say we sit down and we discuss it. And Lori will tell you that if we are at an impasse, I just allow Wayne to make the shot, make the call. Why? Because he's the head of the household. Do you know what that's met met with? What? This is 2014. We don't do that anymore. You're quiet now. Amen. This is 2014. We don't do that anymore. But if God is allowed to have his will in the home, that's God's will. Somebody say, the unfortunate thing is, is that people have not allowed the will of God to take its place in the home. And I'm not blaming it on everybody in the home. There can be just one individual in the home that refuses to allow God to be God in the home and it ruins everything. Am I right? Amen. We can pray all we want to pray. We can fast all we want to fast. But if it's not that individual's will to change, nothing's going to change in that home. Somebody say amen. And God has to do things and the individuals have to do things. Amen. But if God's will is for the family to be complete and to be whole, then there is nothing wrong with that. If a home is complete, 
If a home is relying upon the will of God, if they're relying upon the spirit of God to call the shots and at home, saints of God, whatever decision the man makes, it will be lined up with what the spirit of God says. Somebody say amen. Whatever decision the woman makes, it will line up with the will of God. And that's what God intended for you and I to do. So what's the spirit of God's role? To get you and I back to the will of God. It is not the will of God for you and I to be sad, wimpy little men who do nothing. Help me. It is not God's will for women to be treated as something of an object, something that we look after and lust at all the time. It is not God's will for that to take place. It is not God's will for our children to call the shots. It is our job to train up a child the way it should be trained up. Let me say something that's not popular today. It is our job as parents to correct the child when the child gets out of line. Somebody say amen. If you don't spend the time to correct your child, to correct the will of that child, when that child gets out there and gets in trouble with things, guess what? Don't say a word. Did I lose you? It's God's will, saints of God. It's the spirit of God's will to get us back to God's will. He does that by changing our thoughts, <laughs> changing our purpose. Somebody say amen. By changing our feelings. He brings us all back to what God truly intended for you and I to do. Amen. Amen. That's why when Jesus walked the earth with the disciples, he told them, and I want you to notice this, he told the disciples, I must go away. Why? Because the Father is going to send you another comforter. Does anybody realize that before the end of the four Gospels, Peter was one saying, I'm going to go back to my old lifestyle. Pastor, does it really say that? He says, I'm going to go fishing. And it wasn't for a pleasurable moment. He said, I'm going to go back to what I used to know. I'm going to walk away, Brother Barnett, from the things that Jesus taught me. I'm going to go back to the things that I used to know. Does anybody remember the questions that Jesus asked Peter? Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? If you love me, love me, love me, you'll do what I tell you to do. Go feed them. Go tell them. Go show them. And saints of God, here was the great thing about the Spirit of God. In Acts chapter 2, those same people who said, I'm going to go back to my old lifestyle, they listened to Jesus one more time. They went into the upper room. And what does the scripture say? It says when they went into the upper room, they got rid of themselves. They allowed their will to be put aside. They forgot about the past. Friend, the Bible says that when they got into the upper room and they got in one mind and one accord, meaning it wasn't their own agenda anymore, the Bible says that they were filled with the Spirit of God. They were endued with the power that Jesus spoke about. Power, isn't that word dunamis, is that, is that right? An explosive kind of power. A power of knowledge. Am I saying this right? A power of will. Wow. A power of the mind. I got more to go into. It changed, Wayne, our knowledge. Why? Because our knowledge was set aside. Somebody say amen. 
It changed our will. Why? Because our will became the will of the Spirit of God. Somebody say amen. It changed our mind. Why? Because we stopped relying on the things that we know, and we start trusting in the mind of God. And when the mind of God starts to change you and I, it changes every part of us. That's power, saints of God. Do you know that? That is power. Because, think about this for a minute. If your mind is in step with God, somebody called it lockstep, in sync. Your mind is in sync with God. Somebody say amen. Your thoughts become the thoughts of God. Somebody say amen. Your will becomes that will of God. Somebody say amen. You no longer control yourself, but you allow the Spirit of God to control you as He wills. Does anybody know what happens next? Finish reading out Acts. Somebody help me tonight. When our mind becomes his mind, saints of God, when we look at people, amen, we begin to look at people differently, amen. We look at people thinking, you know what, I can win them to the Lord. Somebody say amen. You don't look at them thinking, Lord, if only I had the boldness in me to say something that needs to be said. You don't think if I have the boldness. You say, you say, Spirit of God, use me to speak the things that need to be spoken right now. Amen. If somebody comes up and says, will you pray for me? We don't sit and look around for brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so to pray. We immediately grab them by the hand and we begin to pray right then and there. Amen. Not with doubting, not with fear, but with faith and with boldness. Somebody say amen. I don't care what the issue is that other people have. When they come to us and present that problem, we don't sit and look at them and shake our heads thinking, what are we supposed to do? We know immediately what to do. Will you stand, please? I have a lot more. Your mind tonight should tell you if it's lined up with that mind of the Spirit of God, it should tell you what to do next. If you're here tonight and you're not saved, you do not have a relationship with God, these altars are open. We have ministers standing by that will pray with you if you want to come and kneel down and pray. Sometimes people seek after the infilling of the Holy Spirit of God. And when it doesn't happen their way, right, they become discouraged. They feel rejected or dejected, however you want to word it. They feel like they missed out. Something happened. Brenda, the Spirit of God, even though you've not spoken a, another language, the Spirit of God still operates if we allow Him to operate. He begins to work on us. You know why some of us have never...